Alright guys, welcome to another CSL cast with your host Hydro and Shadow Wolf. That's right. Two long time StarCraft fans. Been playing since Brood War. Never really took it seriously until StarCraft 2, and here I am. Running a CSL team. Yeah. Living the dream. <laughs> Liv <laughs> living the dream. <laughs> yeah, it does roll the same. <laughs> yeah. So guys, uh, we're going to bring to you four matches today, which is Texas Tech University against Colorado School of Mines, an engineering school in Colorado, in Division 2, StarCraft 2, Heart of the Swarm action. So we're just going to jump right in to the first match, which um, is going to be a ZVZ. So Al, are we in party? Yes, we are. Boom. Yes. Let's go. Watch with others. Here it comes. Brutal music is sick, so I'm gonna keep it on. Okay, yeah, here we go. I have some ZVZ action on Belshir Vestige LE. Anyone didn't know, LE stands for Ladder Edition. Quick little tip of the day. That's right. So, spawning in the bottom right, it is the Orange Zerg. For Colorado School of Mines, it is Petricor. And in the top left, Spawning as the blue Zerg, playing for Texas Tech University, it is Rogue. So, Al, we got some ZVZ action here. Yeah. I don't know too much about ZVZ action, but I know in the early game it's pretty, it's very micro intensive. Oh, God, yeah. And then it gets kind of less micro intensive, a lot less. Micro intensive, in my opinion. Uh, you get some roaches or some mutas. It's, it's not so bad, but you do you, you do can you can do like ling run buys and stuff like that. These guys chatting it up. Rogue talking about how he's such an esports fanboy, trying to watch stuff. Mm. <laughs> Petricor talking about Pokemon. Did you see that? Since there's nothing happening here, did you see this Pokemon thing on Twitch TV? No, but I, heard, I think I've, I didn't like click on it. I think I saw it, heard of it. Okay, it's like the funniest thing. So what they're doing, it's the old Pokemon Red. And mm -hmm. you type in the chat what you want the button presses to be in the game. Like there's no one playing it. Like the chat plays the game. So like you hit A and it'll hit A in the game. And like you hit up and then the guy will walk up in the game. And it's so funny because people are just like spamming things and they've been playing it for like over 10 days now and they actually got pretty far. I'm like surprised how far they got. They're stuck in the Team Rocket hideout forever though. It was so funny. Because people in the chat would just play it? Yeah, and like they would just like punch a bunch of people to say go up through the door and like everyone else would say no go down because like people are just trolling and being assholes. That's so funny. I think Blue put down that pool. I don't, I don't know if it was a 15 hatch or uh, 15 pool or not, but yeah. So he's uh he's trying to kill off this drone scout. Petrus. He's he's made six lings. Petricor. So I'm actually yeah, what? How Petricor early was that pool? I'm actually was that was like a 12 yeah, pool? Uh, I don't know how early it was, but I, when I saw Rogue's pool like halfway done or almost gotten done, I saw that he already has pulled down Petro. So Ro Rogue, seeing these lings, decides not to expand, and actually he's getting a defensive spine crawler in a, in a very nice position, I might add. There's not a lot of service area on that right there. And, uh, ooh, Rogue loses an Overlord over Petrocore's base, and he's going to lose a drone. And he lost another drone up there before that by his natural, so, yeah, he's losing quite a bit here in the early game. Oh god, he's outnumbered. Yeah. Oh no, he's got some. He's got some reinforcements coming from his main. So yeah, he'll be able to hold that off and secure that expansion. But 
Petrichor has a expansion that's almost completed, whereas Rogue's just started, so that's not a very good start for Rogue here. Now Rogue yeah. Rogue is getting okay, they're both getting gas. And um He is in the he's alright with that expo for now. I yeah. mean they, they got in there research that uh speed for boost. Right, yeah. So, yeah, Rogue Rogue if you hit D you can see the production tab and um Rogue has um he has speed about halfway done, whereas it's just started for Petrichor. So there's going to be an, a, a nice window here, and if you have speed and your opponent doesn't, like you could just tear him to shreds. If you have like equal lane numbers, even sometimes a little less lane numbers, speed just makes a magnificent difference. What's the most common uh, transition after this? They go what bailings or witches? Well, s oftentimes you get a bailingness, often for defense, unless you're going to be very aggressive. Um, you can get it for that too, but roaches is the most common thing in the ZVZ metagame right now. I honestly like to end it before that. <laughs> I like to just, I like my ZVZs nice and short. Uh, I don't really like to play this matchup for a long period of time because no. it's, it's just roach hitting roach hitting roach. You think if uh, Petricor got the uh, the metabolic boost earlier on and attacked, and had it. You think that would force you to throw down a baneling nest? Or yeah, I mean, if you see your opponent being aggressive at all, a baneling nest is always, always a worthwhile investment because there's nothing scarier when you're aggressing with a lings than a baneling. It can literally take out 30 zerglings with one, one baneling. So it's yeah, it, it really could diffuse a lot of aggression. Yeah, we go bailing this. Oh boy. Petricor, he looks up he's saying. Petricor is getting aggressive as hell right now. Oh, he just got his metabolic boost. But Ro Rogue is playing this really well actually. He he identified this and he just spawned an equal number of links and the unit count right now it's it's fairly even, but Petricor is taking an advantage, but there's a spine crawler and a queen here. Which should be enough to hold this off. Ooh, I don't like this decision to go for the spine. If I was Petrichor, I would have went for that that exposed mineral uh, mineral line right up there. So actually, I mean, players are, I think are on even footing right now. But Petrichor's making a transition into Roaches, whereas Rogue's still on, still sticking on Lings for now. Yeah. Hmm. Trying to see what he's gonna go after this. Oh, well, he's taking the two gases. That is natural. Hmm. Ooh, it's early gas. He doesn't even have full saturation yet. See Rogue trying to do a run by here, but Petrichor sees it, moving some roaches out. He could surround those, easily take them out. Oh. Ooh, Petrichor, nice through. little move, clustering the roaches there. That uh, reduces surface area. Nice. But Definitely some good trades there with those roaches. Yeah. They're still on very, very even supply. Okay, he's gonna have to back off with all these roaches now. No way. Roaches are very, very, very tanky wrestlings. But Rogue just made a whole nother slew of zerglings. There we go, Mutas. I thought he might go with that. Oh yeah. Anyway, I was wondering why would he get later. I was wondering what he was being to go for. Yeah, so this is the other popular style, which hasn't been as popular since the Spore Crawler buff, but um, Mutas is also another big viable option. I mean, ZVZ, you're either going Roaches or Mutas. There are some Ling styles, but they're not nearly as popular anymore. But, uh, you know, they're still out there. And the ZVZ really hasn't changed that much since Hot of the Swarm came out. It's probably like the... I would say it's the game, the uh, matchup that had the least change through transition from Wings of Liberty to Heart of the Swarm and uh, Shadow Wolf lagging out of the game. This is just Sorry, a replay. I actually hit the window key. Oh goddamn. Okay. All right, we're good. Yeah, I was just saying, I saw. Um, I was watching ST on. Uh, what was it? It was probably uh, WCS, WCS, right? Because right. Nesty hasn't played anything but WCS recently. <laughs> okay, that had to be that. And that's that's every every single match, he he went mutas, but he'll just wait 
attack, harass a little bit, and it's just like have so much lore on just make a, a lot. And he was just like, Nesty, if you listen to Nesty, you always go with the same build. He did alright. He won the like he ended up losing, but there were good matches. It was sick though. Yeah, against like uh who was it against? Like Oz and Desro and he had a group with Oz, Desro and someone else, I can't remember. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't believe like how he was able to harass the way he did without having like and still save that much larva and just make like twenty five to thirty of them. Yeah. Just, just definitely scary. So what happens when you're the creator of the universe in ST. So both players have a third right. base up now. Uh Pectricors is about to pop. But uh seven mutas. zero saturation on it. Yeah, we got seven mutalisk. Rogue uh, going very defensive on his natural there, but she might want to move those spines down to his third. I mean, maybe split them up a little bit because he's got a very exposed third. And Petrichor knows about it. He's trying to send some roaches, but ooh, we might want to rethink this with all these mutalisk here. I mean, he could do some damage, but maybe not. He might not be able to take that hatch down before these roaches die. Oh, definitely not with the zerglings. He's saving some gas here. I wonder. You think he's gonna? What do you, you think he's gonna get a different unit here? Uh, no, he's probably he just the hydras, he's or? probably just slipping on his macro, honestly. Do you, was there is there a hydra den out? Oh yeah. boy, yeah, yeah, yeah that's. I, mean, so I, I just don't know as a Zerg player. What do you do uh, when you see mutas? I mean, you get hydras, but then what does muta guy do? Well, what I don't know, I I'm actually I haven't seen this too much in pro matchups, like a, a mutalist style versus a roach hydra style, but um. What I would do is I would get Banelings. Banelings speed. Banelings, like, they destroy uh, Hydras. They're light units. Mm, yeah, but you have do. to micro. You have to get around the Roaches, which is really hard. So, yeah. But if you could hit him at a, at a right time and where he has a low number of Hydras, like right now, he's only got three, f four. Yeah. You could take it out, but there's a Spore Crawler there. there comes. Spore Crawlers do plus 45 to Biological. Which is ridiculous. It like three shots mutalisk. Oh god. Oh god, he's fighting the spore crawler. Oh. And there's only three hydros. He lost a lot of mutas, but he still has an overwhelming number here. And and the, these hydros are just gonna trickle out one at a time. I don't I don't know what Petrichor is gonna do. He's gotta he's gotta group them up at his natural and then bring them in in mass because Okay, alright, Rogue pulls back. Oh, nope. He decides, fuck it. I have enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if he grouped them up together, it definitely would have been closer. Play. Yeah, one of the most difficult things I find with Zerg vs Zerg is when your opponent is, in, is attacking in between your hatcheries because those are your production points and that makes it very difficult to get your units in a critical mass because they're rallying from all different directions. I really hate when Protoss do their all-ins and like they do it at your natural and you have units coming in from your third, your main, and they're trickling in all different directions and they're just being picked off one at a time. It's very difficult. Ooh, he takes out that spore before he even gets a shot off. That's good. Takes out the third. Rogue is getting a big supply advantage, doing very well for himself right here. Yeah. Look at all these overlords. It's going to be real hard. Snipe overlords. 62 wings still sit in his base. Now there's no infestation pit, so he can't get any money fungal off or anything. But he does have a nice number of hydralis now. I would be I would be kind of afraid to fight that with these mutas. Um, it's just about that number. He could probably take it, but it'll probably take a good yeah, amount of losses. Yeah, and they're upgraded one. They do have an yeah, upgraded did, did the mutas Oh, bringing in the lings though. That's gonna be great. And boom, Petrichor just calls GG, and that's it. Rogue takes it. Rogue takes the first match for Texas Tech University. How about that? That's Rogue's first win um, for Texas Tech. He's very excited. Congratulations to Rogue. You played, you played well. I wonder uh, if he ever scouted that Spire or... If you only found out about it once you saw the first. That's a good question. I should I should check their vision more often when I'm doing this. I'm a noob at observing, so. No, I yeah I forgot. I think so. All right, so.
let's head into game number two here. It's going to be a PvP. So, Al, you're going to have to talk about this because I have no idea what's going on. Oh, it was a PvP. Oh, oh man. yeah. PvP is probably the most mind gamey you know, matchup. It's just like. I, yeah, <laughs> I used to think of it beforehand, and then I even just found out like about like how they. Like, there's even some pro players player that'll do a 10 gate or 11 gate, and it's just like if you don't scout it, it yeah. <laughs> it's like over. You need to scout it. Yeah. It's it's an unforgiving matchup and like it's all about deception. It's unbelievable. I'm glad I don't have to play it. It's like TVT is a chess match. Z V Z is a knife fight. And fucking like PvP's a magic show, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so spawning in the top right for the Colorado School of Mines, it is the orange Protoss. It is Alistair. And in the bottom left, playing for Texas Tech in the Texas Tech colors of red, it is the Red Protoss Cosmic. All right. No openings. Really much yet. No proxies, right? No. Speaking of, I had a bastard the other day. <laughs> it was on this Speaking map. Of a ten game. No. Oh. I had a bastard the other day do proxy gateways in my in my main on this map, like all the way in the side. Again, wow. even after it was another one after that replay I showed you, and like I was cheesing him, so like I had Lings out and I just like I just killed him like in two seconds, and then he said like he's like f you go hang yourself, and then he just left. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> As we put down his gateway at a, a little bit, actually a little bit later than a normal PVP. Normally they put down like at a 12 supply, 12 gate. Okay. He actually put his at 13. So double gas here for Cosmic. What does what does that mean? Does that mean he's going like DT or something? Uh, it's just it's always good to have extra gas. I mean, to go, you could you could go DT opening or maybe an even Oracle, which is normally um. Alistair is only on one gas, and he's not even he's not even gathering from it. It's like. Yeah, he you like, might want an expo. Did he forget about no. that simulator he made? This is an interesting uh, matchup to me because it's like uh, you don't expand very quick. It's interesting. <coughs> yeah, I mean, if they were gonna like, if they were an expo, I would say I would assume Cosmic would be for anyone because getting that gas, you can easily do a sentry first, and then right. you have the some mothership right away to get that energy. Cosmic checking for proxy oh. pylons. Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Check for or get Oracle, you said or? Um well no if you um if you did, if you did word in the expo it would be a um, mothership with the overcharge so you have energy sentry and then oh, uh, right. the quick robo in case in case the uh, gets blink. But it doesn't look like that. I'm really interested to see with that one gas. Usually they'll expo two, just taking one gas. But he's just he Cosmic taking a good supply lead here, even yeah. you know off one base here. That's not very good in the early game. Um, you know if you ha if your opponent has a supply lead in a mirror matchup, it's it's not good usually for you. Well. Yeah, I mean, if he he didn't do anything taking that gate so early, so I mean, he he hurt himself economy wise. Yeah. Given that, that's probably why. Um. God damn it, Al. All right, you're good. This is really I'm really interested. He didn't do anything. Cosmic doesn't even know where he is right now. He's still looking for him. Doesn't even know it's cross cross map right now. He's looking. supply block there for a bit. So oh! On Cosmic. Cosmic finds the uh, the pylon down here. He's gonna go right after the probe, I bet. Yep. Kill those pesky little probes on the map. That's gonna shut down this gate. Oh, this this looks like... Is, is this a 4-gate? Is he gonna 4-gate? It's uh 3-gate? 
Be yeah, it's a kind of, it's a three gauge just because he since he put down his gateway at like uh, eleven. I don't know it was a ten either a ten a ten gate or eleven gate. But because he put it down so early it gives him he gets warp gate just a few seconds a little bit like ahead of time from his opponent. It's a small window. Yeah, I mean Cosmics is about done here and since he found that proxy pylon, that window has been closed. Yeah. He definitely shut that down just finding that. And what was nice is normally there won't be that many pylons lined up like this unless you really know what you're doing, so that's good. Because I've done the the 10 gate. As soon as I got in there, I saw him as his gates were warping open. You just snipe out that pylon. So, Cosmic. I'm confused what Alistair's doing here because, I mean, he's is he did he plan on being aggressive? Like, do you do a 3 gate into expand? Is it like a pressure? Oh, no. I mean, I, I, I can't see him coming from it. Normally, you would want to put it down 3 gate right after and just try to get that warp gate open as soon as, as soon as possible. But is it an all-in or is it like a pressure and then... It's, I think it's pretty much an all-in just because your opponent is just so... He, his economy should just be up ahead in your opponent. Because oh, uh, Alistar is getting another another warp gate here but look at, the, look at the amount of minerals he's pooling it's just... Yeah, I mean, I, he should have done some something with it. Now he did get a proxy pylon in down in the bottom center there warped in three stalkers but Cosmic has seen this so you can see on Cosmic's map he has seen this yeah, he has a robo too and with an Amora pumping out oh Alistar is about to go into this right now with uh, just five stalkers and he is oh and Cosmic gets him with the force field force. and cool, takes out two three stalkers this isn't looking very good for Alistar. He's pulling so many minerals. I mean, just... Oh, wow. Look at the yeah, supply difference. I, mean, yeah, I would like to see him throw down that Nexus. I mean, I probably wouldn't do it, but at least... Even throw down two Nexus and just try to... Yeah, it's... Oh, God. Al Alistar, I think he's realizing it's like... He, he's, he's screwed here if he doesn't go, and... He's just getting shut down by Cosmic, like, left and right. Cosmic, oh, he's he's going around trying to do a little sneak attack here, but I'm not even sure Alistair is aware that he's not on the ramp anymore. Oh, trying to take out the sentry, he does. Now it's just five stalkers versus five stalkers, three sentries, and an immortal. And we, as we know, immortals like to do some fucking work when it comes to battles. Yo, I got this great build, man, for PVT. I love it because I don't even. Immortals are just so good. They're good against the rockets. Yeah, they sure are. Oh, and Cosmic just has an overwhelming force right here. I can't see Alistair. One Stalker left, and then zero Stalkers left. Yeah. Co Cosmic going for, uh, with his probe out, says do another proxy pylon. I think he's going to go right for for the counterattack here to end the game. Because, I mean, if you look at the supply, like, Cosmic is tripling Alistair's supply right now. Yeah. If anything, uh, if he had charge... I was say maybe. Oh my god, Alistair's going six gate off one base. This is absurd. Yeah. Absurd build. Oh. He doesn't know either that Cosmic has an expo. So, very little. Oh wow, he doesn't. He scouting. doesn't even know. That's right. That's probably why he's still on one base. And he does not know that he's also right at his doorstep. Now he sees the zealots. Oh, and here comes Cosmic. He's just going to A-move up this ramp. Yeah. I mean, I like it as long, but like if it's scouted, the 10 gate, 11 gate, and you don't utilize it early, early on, and don't seize anything on that small window before you go get that warp gate research. It's gonna be there. And that's it, guys. Alistar, GG's. Cosmic takes the victory for Texas Tech University. Texas Tech now up 2 nothing. Nice. I'm going to lower my graphics a little bit just to make sure. I couldn't believe that either. It was just like, I, I think it had...
I remember watching one of the controls streams, and I remember him talking about it. And I, I remember watching a video. I was like, "Why would the guy get it so early?" And I didn't. I didn't know people did that. I didn't know that was the actual thing. But well, I didn't even know you're teaching me right now. TVT is a PVP is a mystery to me. Yeah, but if you don't scout it, like I think when not in control scouted and saw the eleven gate, he eleven or ten, he he immediately pumped out just like three zealots from the mount and then got a. Uh, after that, he started getting stalkers. Because by then, it, it gives him enough time to get the work eight. It was good. Yeah. Alright, guys. We got the 2v2 going here. It will be Texas Tech on the top right and Colorado School of Mines in the bottom left. So, in the bottom left, spawning is the white Terran. I think that's white. Is that pink? Maybe that's white or pink. Is it pink? Might be pink. Codfish for Colorado School of Mines, the Pink Terran. And his partner, it is the Yellow Zerg, playing for Colorado School of Mines, the Overmind. And in the top right, spawning is the Orange Zerg for Texas Tech University, it is Hydro. That's me, guys, I'm Hydro. And his partner, for also for Texas Tech University, it is. Tom T. It's the Green Terran. There was some lovely little banter. Tom T. was curious about what type of school Colorado School of Mines is. Apparently it's an all engineering school. And they actually have a very good um, Division I CSL team. With a lot of players. Which is very interesting. So there's, um, I mean it's not one of the more known schools in the country. But it sure has a more prominent... CSL team than a lot of other schools um, that are more known, so it's pretty interesting. Maybe it just has to go with that engineering type mindset. People a little into strategy games and stuff like that type of field. A little geekier, computer, more into computers, you know, stuff like that. Who knows? But, um, so I think in the early game I said I was going to play this very safe, and Tom C said he was going to go Reapers. So, just to get some scouting info, 2v2 2v2 scary because a double cheese can be devastating. Hydro with the normal hatchery on the 230 second. Yep, I uh, actually went for pool first, just in case there's any shenanigans, like with its 10 pool or something. Although the rush distance on this map is insane. You have to go down this way, around here, all the way up this way, and then into the main. Yeah, Overlord spotted. <laughs> Hydro getting the gas. I uh, decided to go for early speed this game just because speedlings are just a great defense, great for scouting. And you never know, 2v2, lots of shenanigans, man. Lots of shenanigans. Delay is unexposed. It's an OB unit. <laughs> <laughs> You're so afraid of them, it's so funny. They're not like that strong, but you think they uh, are. I know, I know. Unless I have like a lot of zealots, like I see like there's so many links, but then it's just like I was just like, oh wow. Yeah, zealots are good again. Yeah. They're... They just look hard. they look hard. Unless they have like a lot of upgrades, like you really shouldldn't be afraid. So Tom T getting a drone kill with yeah. his um he's got two kills with his Reaper here. Oh and it might die! Oh it gets out. Nice. So Tom T does very nice scouting with his um his Reaper there. Got some links trapped here trying to get out. Yep. One of the things I hate about joint bases with um, Terran is uh, these fucking depot walls. Let me tell you. I have had some heated arguments with people in team games about how to fucking play with the Zerg partner. Like they just don't they just don't understand that like we rally to our expo. Like they just I should like make uh put like a little camera on the supply depot a sensor and it like <laughs> your ally and it goes down and back up for you. Well, that's what the whole give the give opponent control is, right? Tom T gave me control of his units, so. Yeah, but like, what if you're handicapped? You know, you need to like for the handicapped people. Like, <laughs> the, 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Codfish looking out for some overlords here. At least I think so. Overmind getting his expo up and running. Hydra going up to Lair very early off two base here. Tom T getting some getting some Hellions out. Hellions always a great early game unit, especially in two v two. Oh, there we go, Roach. Roach down for the Overmind. Getting some Roaches up, which is honestly a good thing for me because um, me getting this early Lair is usually indicative of a Mutalist build. Tom T getting in here with three Reapers now. Almost gets surrounded by some Zerglings. Ooh, forces Codfish to pull all of his workers. One of the Reapers goes down. Gets gets two worker kills. Ooh, another Reaper goes down to that sunken colony. Or, um, spine crawler. <laughs> sunken colony. I'm talking as if this is Brood War. I should play Brood War well, again, just for kicks. Definitely stopped, uh... Has his expo for a little bit, still getting delayed there. Oh yeah. And they don't even have the vision of you guys. Well, they know that you, they know that Hydro expo, but they don't know that um, Tom expo. It must have been Tom T's Reapers that took out that uh, that building, that uh, SCV yep, building, the uh, command center. Yep, and he's just getting it down now. I mean, well, got a worker they're working on it now, so that was delayed for a very good, good few seconds. Oh wow, if you look at the worker tab right now, <laughs> Hydro has been power droning. He's almost at 50 workers right now, which is double pretty much everybody else in the game. Spire halfway done for Hydro as well. This is how I like to play my team games. Protect me while I macro. <laughs> <laughs> He's going for a third. And uh, are the roaches coming out yet yeah, for codfish? No, you, or I'm um, sorry, the overmind. The overmind is, despite building the roach warren, has a, has a, s a slew of zerglings here. Looks like he's gonna go try and pressure. Yeah, and I mean he does. Uh, codfish does have stim, but Tom will have it in a few seconds. Working on the upgrade too. Did you Tom say? Did you say Tom fish? Todd. Oh, cod, codfish. It's co I don't know. Codfish and Tom T. So, yeah, I think I said. I don't know if I said Tom fish or codfish. <laughs> I I said Tom T putting some widow mines out randomly on the map. That's a cute little tactic. Takes out a marauder there. That was a very lucky shot. Taking out the strongest unit. Um. Okay, some roaches getting mixed in here for codfish. Or uh, sorry, the overmind. Hydro's got Mutilus out now though, and. Uh, He's also getting Baneling Speed, which is almost completed. He's going to do very well against... Oh, and here we go. Tom T and... Tom T with the upgrade advantage. Surround. Oh, almost. Those Marines out in the map, and Codfish loses his entire force. I like it. He's dropping. Ooh. Hydro trying Hydro and Tom T trying to go for some harassment, but there is just a bajillion static defenses here. And Hydro does not want to mess with the spore collar, does plus forty five versus biological. So Hydro declares the opponents have gone turtle mode. Let's take the map. Oh, Tom T getting surrounded here. Starts so microing back. Oh, with these two widow mines here, though, and these mutilists, mm. easily gonna f gonna defend this. Oh, starting to lag a little bit. Now oh, you're killing me. Oh, and these roaches are not fast enough. They cannot retreat. Um, there is no roach speed yet. Oh, but these marines are definitely gonna push these uh, mutilists back. These mutilists are only at plus one. The marines are at. Oh, the marines are only at zero zero. So. Hydro, Hydro making eight bane links. Eight banes, man. Gotta get some banes. Push. A lot of marines Shit. out and a lot of zerglings out. Banelings destroy both. 
Tom T with a nice bio bio mime with some marauders here. Very nice mix. Tom T making sure he's, he's still he's getting he has his one he has one one upgraded. He's working on it. And he has upgrade advantage, that's good for Tom T. Opponents are uh, upgrade free right now, they don't have any upgrades. Oh Oh, there is a plus one actually for the Marines that just finished. Uh, Codfish is also getting. Oh, sorry, no, that's uh, Tom T. He's getting some additional upgrades. The Overmind is, is now just about to finish plus one Carapace. Hydro up to 63 workers, Tom T at 42. And uh, the other, both the opponents are. Both uh, Colorado players are below 40 right now, so uh, they better get something done unless, you know, there's going to be a huge income advantage here for a while here, and you know how that works. Start building up a bank, and you could easily remax. Yeah, they're, oh, now they're just finding out about uh, Tom's uh, third expert being set up there. Well, good position here for Codfish. Got the high ground. Hydro losing a few mutas. Oh, but he's going up with the um with the banelings. Oh, and he wipes out uh -huh. his entire army. But the splash damage from the banelings actually locks his lings inside that little plateau there. Yeah, who was shooting at that rock? It was it was the opponent, right? Trying to stop before you got it. No, it was I think my banelings, they um the splash damage from the banelings. Oh, <laughs> now I'm stuck in there. Hydro going for his fourth base. Muta count getting pretty high. Muta count's at 23 right <coughs> now. Ooh, you only saw what we saw on this map. <laughs> you guys have like a good vision control on top. Yeah, the vision is is quite absurd for the Texas Tech team here. You can see there's overlord spread everywhere. And they can pretty much see what, it, what everything that's going on. Whereas for player two, they're mostly in the dark. They see around their immediate bases, and that's it. Which is it's yeah. that's what happens when you have mutilus on the the opponent has mutilus on the map. They're going to shut down your vision everywhere. Yeah, I mean Codfish is getting the Thor. He has one Thor out. Let me help. A bit, Look at the bottom right. Look at Tom T. He's coming with the Doom Drop. He's going right into the main of Codfish here. Oh, and he splits it up. He does one at the, the natural. Oh, Thor gets one medevac fully loaded. Thor gets maybe possibly two. Oh, two. Very widespread. Tom T unloading all of his stuff. All oh, he loses a full another, another full medevac. Not sure how effective this is going to be, actually. A lot of the units seem like they died as soon as they were trickled out. Well, over here comes Hydro. He's gunning down the natural of Codfish. Ooh, he takes out the planetary, gets away scot free. The up ah. upgrade starting to climb for uh, the Overmind. He's got 1 1. Hydro's on plus 2 with his air, though, and he's on 1 1 for his, me his melee. His lings. Codfish just about to finish his armor, his first armor upgrade, so he's well behind. Whereas Tom T's at 1 2, and he's about to be at 2 2 in like a few seconds here. Yeah, they, oh, they're just trapped. But you guys have a lot of vision on the map. Oh, Hydro, the amount of mutilists, 34 mutilists on the map right now. Just. Terrifying force. I mean, but look at the amount of hydralis. That is enough hydralis to take on those mutas right now. That is a very large amount of hydralis. Tom T saying, "Listen, guys, I just need some tanks and we'll be cool, all right?" But I actually think that they're more than cool right now with the amount of banelings. That um, oh, hydro doesn't have any banelings actually. There they are. Now he's morphing banelings. Yeah, with the amount of uh, ground and air forces Hydro has, and the amount of forces that Tom has with his really good widow mine spread, 
Uh, this is going to be this is going to be a tough attack, but they do have a a large amount of units. The thing is, though, the upgrade advantage is yeah. in great favor of Texas Tech right here. Oh, Tom T stepping up. Here we go. Hydro rolling in with the Banelings. Here they come. Can't even tell what color is what. Oh, and everything just blows up because Banelings melt Hydralis. Huh. And that is just going to destroy the supply. And that's it. Colorado taps out after they get their forces wiped out. And Texas Tech will take the third game. Now, technically, the CSL format is, is first to three wins. And um, Texas Tech does win the match at this point. But since we play all matches simultaneously, there was a fourth match played, and we're going to show you guys that fourth match here. So as soon as Al gets out of the replay, we'll... Uh, yeah, I got out. Sorry. Okay. We'll get into the last and final match here. Which is going to be a Zerg versus Protoss. So how appropriate, oh given that I play Zerg and my co-host Shadow Wolf here plays Protoss. We'll be the... Uh, the perfect pair to analyze this. Yeah, that is for sure. And it's also, I think, a really good matchup. A lot of things going on, a lot of things happening. And both the rates have to scout constantly. That's right. So, here we are. The map is Yansu. Oh, oh what? Oh, you're lagging. You got dropped. Yeah. Okay, alright, we'll quit since it was the beginning and we'll get back into it. Are you still in Battle.net? Yeah. Are we still in a party? Yeah, still in party. Okay. <coughs> Sorry about that, folks. Shadow Wolf seems to have a lot of internet connection issues. Don't know why. He doesn't either. Alright, the map is Yansu and spawning up here in the top right it is the blue Protoss with the cool Protoss icon. It is Tetrocity for Texas Tech University. And down in the bottom left playing for the Colorado School of Mines, it is the Red Zerg. It is Prosper. Alright Al, I want to tell you something. I fucking hate this map for any... Zerg matchup. I was gonna say I like this map. Yeah, because it's pretty good for Protoss, and it's pretty good for Terran um, against Zerg. Uh, Zerg Zerg is actually has a has a losing overall losing win rate on this map if you look at the stats. And um, I think it's mostly because one, there's fucking rocks between your second and your third, like that makes it so difficult. Um, for Zerg to take their third and properly defend it, unless you go like Roach, uh, you could. If you go Roach, even still, you want to get this third up before you start getting Roaches out. So like, there's a period where this third is like completely undefended, and uh, there's also short rush just rush distance on this map. I mean, it's just kind of like natural to natural is super short distance in my opinion, at least in the current map pool. Maybe not as short as Daedalus, but uh, it's it's a pretty short distance, and it makes all ins very difficult to hold. There's also great places to hide pylons over here. So, okay, so we're going to see what these guys do here. Let's get the production tab up. No, nope, well, no nexus, no early nexus, or no normal timing for nexus. Normally it's like a 15 if you're trying to be greedy. Almost at 18 supply. I wonder if he's trying to go for a, uh, he's trying to go for a block here on the, uh, the hatchery. So Prosper doing it right, he's getting his pool first, this is what you want to do against Protoss, you get your pool first in case there's any shenanigans like with cannons. And uh, he's trying to get the probe out of the way, there he goes, he gets it out of the way, very nicely done, gets his hatchery down. Nexus so, down. Nexus down and hatchery down around the same time. And the wall instantly started for Tetrocity. 
Prosper sending his Overlord into the right spot up there in the top left to see uh, activity at the natural here at Atrocity. Good Overlord spot there. Yeah, that's where we always put him, yo. <laughs> Tetrocity holding the uh, the tower over here on the right side. Not exactly sure why. Maybe he wants to keep that probe down there and keep it alive so he could do some kind of uh, proxy pylon to warp some things in instead of trying to send another one out. Because sometimes when you try and send another one out, uh, there'll be some zerglings here in the front of the natural uh, looking for that, waiting for that to try and stop any type of um, probe being sent out to make a proxy. So you can see Prosper sending out those two links, probably to do just as I described, put them in front of the natural there to catch anything moving out. But uh, Did he, he didn't know about that expo beforehand. Dude, that was his first time scouting it. Wh who's scouting what expo? Um, I mean, um, yeah, uh, Prosper's expo, Tet Tetracity. Oh, he he it. knew there was a there was a drone trying to get his probe out of the way. I mean, okay, yeah, that's right. So you should have known. Okay. There's basically no one base Zerg build that could like break a f forge fast expand. Like, yeah, I know. I don't really check down. I just wanted to see um, because normally like I'll just wait until it gets like to the five thirty second mark, and then I will scout for the third if I already knew yeah. he already had a second. The third is something you want to check for, but honestly, like Tetrosity assumed there was going to be an expo, and he was right. I mean. It's it's not even that big of a deal, like I said, because you could pretty much hold, like you could hold one base zergolins. Like one base zergolins are absolutely terrible. Even for most races, one base allins are kind of terrible, except like PVP kind of stuff. Ah, uh, I wonder if the uh, Tresrasi has the time that he's trying to do here. So Maybe a two week. this this uh, this probe has been in the vision of Prosper, but he has not taken the initiative to go out and get this probe. Which is, you yeah. know, yeah. You, you want to definitely would have died by now. You, you want to kill this probe? Like this is like holy shit! Like he's gonna make a proxy pylon. I what I do? What I like to do is I I get like two links and I put them on patrol on the left side of the map and I take two links I put them on patrol on the right side of the map, like all over, just to try and spot that damn proxy pylon. Because if you could prevent that proxy pylon from going up, you could completely stop Protoss aggression, like completely. They're yeah, you change it. It's yeah, completely. they're they're if all they in. Transition, becomes, then yeah, you're dead. exactly. Yeah. It's it, and like some people only know how to all in, so like you could really screw with them. And here it goes. There it is. There's a proxy pylon right above the third of Prosper. And Prosper. Unless you're a good hero, and you can just do an amazing all in and just still have it fail twice, still continue and still win. Oh my God, the Jadon game. Don't even. I was so sad. Don't even. <laughs> Jadong fighting like, so hard, wow. tooth and nail. That poor guy, dude. I feel like Jadong just like he just can't get it done. Like, oh, he does. He works so hard too. He's like yeah. a he's like a tragic hero in like StarCraft. <laughs> but um, yeah. But see, war he had a warp prism, and warp prisms are a lot better than pylons because they're air units, and Zerg does not have the best anti-air. Here we go. Like, exactly like I said before, these fucking rocks. He can't even get over to his third. Now he's sending the roaches. He should be able to take these these uh, zealots out before they yeah. take the hatch yeah, down. But, um, still, a lot of damage has been done to it. If he comes in again here with another round, and here he comes. And he's going to go straight for it. Is he going to just try and gun it down? No, he's going for the roaches again. I think if he did come well. Maybe if he kept the first round of roaches on it too, and sent or first round of zealots on it, and then just sent the second round, and then just like right clicked on it, maybe. Oh, I like this. I like his transition to DTs. I've been thinking about maybe doing DTs, or... but I would like to also see like a robo thrown down. Now, Tetrosity, he's just throwing zealots at this. Just honestly, kind of just wasting minerals. Uh, these these roaches are guarding it here pretty well. Prosper still didn't break down these rocks. Like I, I, I can't emphasize how important it is to break these rocks down. Okay, actually, I probably might. If I knew that this was this low and after doing so many harass to this third base already, I probably would have just. Oh, yep, here he goes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, like earlier on it was a waste, but it's just like, you might as well just finish it. Pro Prosper, kind of just saying, fuck it, YOLO, I'm just gonna send my roaches at you, bro. And here he goes, I mean, and Tetrosity has like barely anything at home right now. Um, yeah. This is actually kind of troublesome. He needs to get that DT. Oh, and here we go, four Dark Templars getting warped in down at the bottom oh, base. Oh, oh, yeah. Zealots attacking Larvae at the third. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Prosper has this is, this is no game. detection. And he splits them up like a good Protoss does. And here they go, taking out the workers. Oh, he's going after the Queen, actually. Oh, God, he's not making an Overseer yet. Yeah, he can. Oh, this is, this is, he's falling apart, his workers, each of those DTs has eight kills, eight kills, six kills, eight kills, oh god. What is the worker count right now? Two! One! He has one, zero drones! Zero drones to 43, and that's it. Wow. GG. It's as if Prosper didn't even notice, like, this was happening. I don't know why, Tetrocity's still in the game, and... These DTs are still going at this. I don't know why he's still in the oh. game. He never, he never scouted the main. Never sent like an overlord to his death. Oh his yeah. He had one in position too in the bottom right. I can't tell you. Sometimes I just forget that too. Like honestly, you're just so worried about other stuff like those little zealot harassments. You just kind of forget like around six minutes to send yeah. that overlord across and see that kind of stuff but oh if he saw that I mean all you do is make an overseer he had the roaches and um, he could have he could have batted that down mm -hmm. I'm actually curious I'm actually unsure of what happened to those roaches uh, that were attacking the natural did you see he they were attacking his natural yeah, that is natural. Tetrosity, yeah. Um, he brought them back. Oh, okay, they they were retreated to try and deal with the harass. I see. Here they are. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's it, guys. Texas Tech takes the 4-0 over the Colorado School of Mines, and that puts them in first place in their division with an undefeated record, 5-0. Getting ready for the playoffs, so we'll see how we do. Come playoff time. Yeah. So that's well, it, guys. Good. Good this has been your host, Hydro and Shadow Wolf. And uh, we're glad to bring you some CSL action. Uh, we'll see you next time when we have some games to cast. Out.